All right, we are Masechet Eruvin, Daf Kaf Bet 22, and uh, we have uh, three uh, basic topics. Uh, first of all, we're going to continue some of the Agadot from yesterday about reward and punishment, and uh, we'll finish that also regarding Shia Shirim. Second is, we'll discuss the maximum size of the enclosed area around a large cistern. If the cistern is like, very big, um, up to Bet Sa'atayim, and finally, well, uh, next Mishnah discusses uh, a very interesting question. Does foot traffic nullify a partition? If people are walking right through the area that is enclosed, then does that turn it into a street uh, because it's effectively being used by a street? Or since there still are partitions, so it doesn't matter that it's being used as a, as a street. So that, that'll be a very interesting discussion. Okay, so we start with Agada, Shechorot Ka'orev. We just talked about uh, Shlomo Melech and um, how he made the uh, handles for the Torah uh, so through his parables. So we say, Kibusotav Tal Talim, the next section in Shira Shirim, it says he's describing uh, beloved, he's, uh, his, uh, he's so beautiful, his hair, the curls of his hair um, are wavy, his, his, his hair is wavy and black as a raven. So what does that mean? Amar Chista, Amar Mor Ukva, Melamed Sheyesh Lidrosh Al Kol Kos Vakos Tile Tilim Shel Halachot. That on every single kind of strand of the or stroke of the Torah, the letters in the Torah, one can learn um, tail, uh, meaning wavy. We can learn mountains and mountains of laws from every little detail. Okay, beautiful. Um, Shecharot Kaorev is black as a raven. And whom do you find that the words of the Torah are understood and, and uh, well? Someone who gets up early and goes to the Ben Midrash and stays there until late, spends a lot of hours. He says, furthermore, someone who blackens his face like a raven. In other words, someone who deprives himself from uh, food and from sleep and uh, you know you can see it in the space. In other words, it requires great dedication um, uh, to, in order to acquire Torah. Um, the one who acquires Torah, someone who is uh, actually uh, cruel to his family, um, as as cruel as a raven. Uh, the rabbis uh, uh, understood that a raven. Uh, does not take care of its young when they're when they're very very little. Um, maybe it thinks it's not sure if they're going to survive or not, and so doesn't feed them. Uh, so uh, so too he, uh, that's what a, a sage should do. You had the Rav Ada Bar Matana Hava Ka Azel Berav Amara Hale Levit Levitu Inuke Didach May Avi Lehu Amar La Mishlimu Purme Be Agma. Uh, so, for example, this sage who went to study in the Bet Midrash, and the wife said, said, what should I do for your children? What should I give them for lunch, for dinner? Right? There's, no, there's no food here. So he said, are all, the, uh, are all the rushes in the marsh gone? In other words, there's no good food, so just give them some, uh, some vegetation from outside. Okay, this is a bit of a difficult uh, Talmud, that uh, you should not take care of your family and neglect them in order to study Torah, but I think we have to read this, obviously, in context with uh, other statements like Imen Kemach and Torah. So obviously there is an obligation to provide for one's family, but perhaps this is saying, don't have to provide them with every luxury in, in the world, um, but, uh, but rather can, can get by on a minimal um, amount. And because uh, Torah study uh, requires uh, a, a complete devotion. Okay, Om Shalem Son Av El Panav La'avido. Um, so now we're uh, interpreting a pasuk from Devarim that God repays those who hate him um, to his face in order to destroy them. So I'm not even going to focus on this word, to his face. In the pasuk, the El Panav sounds like it's talking about to he's going to um, repay punishment to the face of the evil person. But we're really rereading it as if it says al panav, meaning God's own face. That was talking about when an evil person does something good, 
So God has to has to repay them, has to give them reward, but he doesn't want to. It's like someone who's carrying a very heavy burden and just wants to drop it and get rid of it. So too, it's a burden for HaKadosh Baruch Hu to have to reward the, uh, uh, the, an evil person. And so he rewards him immediately. It's like, here, here's a few dollars, and, uh, and uh, so we can get, uh, get, out of, get out of my face. It's like, so uh, it's like instant gratification. I feel like a lot of, a lot of acts that are not just have that factor of instant gratification. Oh, that's a nice point, right? Since the, yeah. since the, 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 the sinner is, uh, wants uh, instant gratification in any case, so when he does do a good deed, he helps someone out. So he gets the he gets that reward right away. Whereas the mindset of a sadiq is to uh, is for long term uh, benefit. Good, and that's the next line. Lo yachel sone o amar biila biila the son avhud lo yachel aval yachel sadikim gemurim. So God does not um, does not uh, delay the reward for um, those who hate him, but he does delay it for sadikim. In other words, for sadikim there. They, their um, uh, reward will uh, gather up uh, for the next world where it will be greater. Why does it say um, that I'm commanding you today to do them? That now here in this world, that's the time for action when we perform the mitzvot. Um, after we're dead, we can't do mitzvot anymore. anymore. Um, now to do them, and in the next world to receive the reward. So better to have delayed gratification. What does it mean that God is long-suffering in the plural, right? long of, the, uh, of, of, uh, of faces? Um, uh, should uh, or, or noses, right? Why well, how come it's not in singular? God is long of uh, 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 one. Um, so rather, it teaches us that um, that uh, God's patience is different for uh, righteous people. God is uh, God is uh, long suffering and delays um, the, their reward, whereas not for the sha'im. It's interesting because usually we think of erech as being um, take, taking a long time to give punishment, and here it's applying it to reward as well. The view of the okay, so that's the end of the, of the Agadah. And now we go back to Halakha, and if you remember in the Mishnah, talks about the, uh, the, the, these corner brackets that you put around the well, and according to uh, the banan, it can be as big as you like, but according to the view that, it's limited in size, a size of two betsea, which is 5,000 square cubits, that's the biggest area that you can use the uh, four corner brackets around a well. So now we have a question, uh, just a detail of a question on that. So I think we generally understood this to mean that it's referring to a case like this. Um, that the entirety, the, the bet sa'atayim is the entire area that's enclosed within the corner brackets has to be up to two se'a. So that's how we understood it before. So that's one option, but now we're presenting another option. Perhaps it's the size of the well itself. Let's say I have a very big well, like or, uh, or like a reservoir. And so that itself is bet sa'atayim. And so can that be bet sa'atayim, 5,000 square mile, and then, you, need, oh, you always need two amot more so that uh, have, uh, the majority of an animal can fit inside. So then could you make it betza time plus two and have the corner brackets beyond that area? That's the question. I mean, it's only a small difference, a difference of two amot between them, but uh, um, it's still a, it's a difference. So let's uh, see what the answer is. Uh, Dam, the, what does it depend on? What's the reasoning behind each one? Um, do we say that a person, um, his, his focus is on the size of that cistern? And since he sees the size of the cistern is, has to be betsa um, then we won't make a gezera that he might come to carry in a karpef. What's a karpef? That's an important term. A karpef means an enclosure, something that has, has walls all around, 
um, to a yard, but the yard is not used as a, as a place of residence. You don't live there, the animals don't live there. Um, it's just like, uh, you know, maybe a, a garden, a vegetable garden or something. So the law is that a kapeth, the maximum that it can be to, and closed off and to be able to carry is two satayim. So if you say my attention is to the board and the board is two satayim, so then I'll say that's the biggest it could be and I'll apply the same thing to a kapeth. So since my eyes are uh, fixed on the cistern, that's okay. Or the other option, um, which is more prohibitive, says a person generally looks at the mechitzot, at the corner brackets, and he's going to say, look how big the corner brackets are. They're bet satayim plus two. Oh, must be that that is the maximum that's allowed, and he's going to apply the halacha to his karpeth, but the karpeth shouldn't apply because there it's just bet satayim, not plus two. Therefore, make a gezerah, and say, no, you can't do that. And according to the second option, uh, entirety has to be a bet sa'atayim, including the empty space beyond the sister. Okay, so that's the, that's the two sides of it. But we're, we're going to try to bring a proof from a baraita, a baraita that we've seen already. Tashema kama hen mekorabi, mekorabin, keder o shah veruba shel para. The, so what's the, the, what's the closest that the, the, the corner brackets could be? Well, it has to have enough space that um, beyond the cistern, uh, the edges of the cistern, a majority of an, of an animal can fit there and its head. But we're really, we're going to quote the whole thing. We'll see what the proof is at the end. What's the biggest? Even something very big. That's the Rabbanan. Yehuda says only to se'ah, but not more. Amru l'Rabbi Yehuda, yata modeh bedir v'sahar mukseh v'chaser afilu bet chameshet korim, afilu aseret korim shemutar. So the rabbi said to Rabbi Yehuda, don't you agree, a pen, a staple, a backyard, a courtyard, right? Even if it's gigantic, you're allowed to use it. So now why are you all of a sudden being limit, uh, limiting over here in the case of the well and the brackets around the well? This is completely different. In all those cases of those yards, you have actual walls going around. And so if you have walls, yeah, then it could be really big. But this is a special leniency regarding the well that have only corner brackets and it's mostly open. So in that case, there is a limit. That's why there's a difference. And continuing the Baraita has yet one more opinion. The B. Shimon ben Elazar Omer bor betza taim a betza taim mutar. He says, he agrees that the maximum is two se'ah, but he says it has to be square, right? It can't be like long, it's not a total circus area, um, it can't be very long and thin, but it has to kind of look like, um, look like a square. Um, so he's uh, kind of adding, uh, he's adding a limitation um, uh, to it. Um, okay. Now, uh, so now we're going to see the, what's the proof? Okay, so since, um, since the Bielazar, right, that's to be a difference between them. Um, so since the Bishop Ben Lazar is talking about the cistern itself, um, right, because look how it says, board bedside time, where the board itself has to be, a, you know, in a, in a square shape. Um, so then he's talking about the cistern itself without the boards. So that means the Buddha, who has a different view, as uh, saying is together with the boards, which is what we assumed originally. And so therefore, uh, the Buddha says a little bit smaller without that extra two. Um, so is that is that a good proof? Belohi, the Buddha board, Belopasin Kamar. Not necessarily, maybe the Buddha also is talking about the cistern itself as two se'ah, where and the pasin can be two more, two extra. But then that would be the same exact opinion. What's the difference between them? The difference between them is if it's long and narrow. According to Rabbi Shimon ben Al-Azhar, you're not allowed to be long and narrow, it has to be square. As we point to the Buddha, as long as the surface area total is two se'ah, it is permitted. Um, and so in the end, we don't, do not have a conclusive proof either way to our question. Good. Um, okay, now uh, one more law, since we mentioned Rabbi Shimon ben Al-Azhar, another law that he said, Kelal Lama Rabbi Shimon ben Al-Azhar, 
יכול להעביר את תשמישות לדירה, כגון דיר ושר מוקסה וחסר, אפילו בית חמשת קולים, אפילו או בית עשרת קולים, מותר. So the principle is that any outdoor space that is enclosed with a wall, if it's used as a dwelling for first people or an animal, then it can be as big as you want. בכל דירה שתשמישה לאוויר, כגון בול גנים שבשדות בית צעתיים מותר, יעטה מבית צעתיים אסור. However, any enclosure that's not for anyone to live in, um, uh, so just like a hut or something, see a hut, a person sits in there, a guard, uh, but he's not sitting in there to live in it, he's only in there because he has to watch over what, what is outside. It's the um, outdoor uninhabited space that is the main thing, that in that case, it has a limit of two se'a. Uh, and uh, that concludes this section of uh, that Mishnah. Okay, and uh, now we get to the next, uh, the, the last part, which is, um, tr does traffic nullify a partition? All uh, right, so Mishnah says, Rabbi Yehuda Omer, Im haya derech lishut rabim maksaktan, yisalakin na listadim, hachamim omerim, en osarich. Okay, if you have uh, these, uh, you know, boards around the well, and there are people that wa are walking through, kind of like here in this, in this uh, example, right? So you have a, a, a pathway, and people are walking right, right, right through, not because they want water from the well and they're stopping. This is just the, the, the street, the highway passes through. But the Bihuda says, this is no good, because people passing through shows that it's a Rishut HaRabim. Use that Rishut HaRabim, and that nullifies the effectiveness of these symbolic walls. And therefore, he says, you have to direct traffic to go around it, right? Um, you know, put up a sign, pave, uh, pave the way, and make sure people are going around it and not through it. So that's the Buddha, who's more stringent here. The Chamim, however, say, Omerim and Osarim, you do not have to divert it. So that's the general principle, if you remember this. The Chamim say, traffic is fine, right? What's, what's ma what matters is that the walls are there, and just because there are people walking through, that does not nullify the walls. Okay, now we'll have some long discussion about this. So these two sages say, look, according to the rabbis here, it shows you how strong uh, partitions are. Partitions are so effective that they are considered partitions, even though they are not actually stopping anyone from passing through. Usually that's what the purpose of a partition is to stop traffic. Well, it doesn't matter. Even though they're not stopping traffic, they are still partitions. Good. So that's what these two sages say, early sages. Can uspira le? Now, when they said can, do they agree with Chachamim, or are they just explaining Chachamim? But they don't necessarily agree themselves. One of these sages said. If not that Jerusalem's gates were closed at night, then it would be considered a Rishut Rabim. And that's an even bigger case because there Jerusalem is surrounded with walls, actual big, big walls all around. And uh, be, but because people pass through the city, um, they have, you have to close the gates at night in order for it to be considered a Rishut HaYachid so that you can carry in it. So therefore you see the Rio Hanan himself thought that traffic does nullify walls. Uh, therefore, um, he, 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 you know, in this, in this statement, is only explaining the Rabbanan, but does not himself agree uh, with, with the Rabbanan. Ella kan velos velas He does not agree with that, with, with the Rabbanan. Good. Um, now, uh, uh, the second uh, question on the Mishnah. Now we're going to have a contradiction both for the and the Rabbanan. The contradiction is going to be from one, one and the same source, a Tosefta, which says, Yater al-ken amar the Be'udah, mi sh'ayu lo sh'nei batim mi sh'nei sidei l'shut ha-rabim, osei lo lechi mikan velechi mikan, o kola mikan ve kola mikan. Ve nosei ve noten ba'emsa. Amru lo, en me'albin l'shut ha-rabim be'chach. We saw this case a case couple times before. I have a, a, a street. And I, let's say I own a, a house on this side of the street and on this side of the street. And I want to carry across the street from house to house. So according to the first opinion here, which is the Be'udah, I can sim simply put a lehi, one here and one here on the two uh, sides of the house. And that creates a symbolic uh, wall on both sides. So I have the two uh, 
uh, houses, which are themselves serve as walls. And then these symbolic walls with the lechi here and the lechi here. And so therefore, I have two real walls, two symbolic walls, and I can carry across the street. That's what Abiyu Uda says. You see, this is surprising because I'm not closing off the street. People are still walking up and down the street. And yet, he says, as long as I have a lechi, it's a symbolic wall and the traffic does not nullify it. That contradicts what Abiyu Uda said in our Mishnah. On that, but I, in that Tosefta, the rabbis say, and now the Mishnah Rabbim Bechach. The rabbis say, no, you cannot make an Eru in, in the middle of a street just with a lechi. A lechi works in the case of my boy. doesn't work in such a case of, uh, of a street to be able to close it off. It's open on both sides. And so here, the rabbis are saying that the traffic does obstruct and does nullify the walls, which is opposite of what they said in Amishnah, where they said traffic does not nullify the walls. So we have a question, kashyad rabiyuda, ad rabiyuda, kashyad rabanan, ad rabanan. All right, how are we going to get out of this problem? Okay, that will tell you it's different. In the case of houses on each side of the street, I have two full walls. So if I have two full walls, and then there's two symbolic walls, in that case, he said that the traffic does not nullify the walls because they're really big walls that are there. Whereas here, in the case of the Arishna, which is only quarter brackets, and the corner brackets are just small, you know, to, uh, uh, one ama uh, walls. They're barely, they're barely anything. So in that, in in, in these uh, very symbolic, very very um, uh, just symbolic walls, uh, the corner boards, their traffic does nullify it. So it, it could it make sense. It could be. But how about the the rabbis? The rabbanan, the rabbanan, nami la kashya. Acha ika shem arba mechisot. Atam leka shem arba mechisot. Rabbis can say, but there is there is a way in which the corner the corner boards are better because I have four right right four uh, uh, corners and so there is something there. Uh, whereas in the case of the houses on two sides of the street, there's only two or well, the bigger walls, but there's only two. And so if it's only two, the traffic will nullify it. But if it's four, like Hashem uh, at least in the corner boards, there's a name right. There's a um, a, uh, a symbolic possibility of the four walls that are there, so they end up actually, and this, for this purpose, being stronger. It's very interesting. So is that is that rejecting the previous proof where he said that that the two walls, the two walls make it stronger, but then he's saying no, since it's only two, it's actually weaker. Right. No, so there's there's two different opinions. The first one we we have to resolve the contradiction both according to the Buddha and according to the, 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 the Rabbanan. So there. Uh, uh, so they're, 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 they can both resolve it because there is a sense in which two walls is better because they're walls, but there is a sense in which quarter brackets are better because they're four and not two, right? So each one can grab on to some aspect of this that's better and some aspect of that is better um, and thereby resolve the contradiction. I see. Okay. Good. Amar bi Yisraq bar Yosef, Amar bi Yohanan, Eris Yisrael, and Chayavin Alem, Yishum Rishut Rabim. Rabbi Yohanan here says, that you're not, you are, there's no Rishut HaRabim to Raita in all of Eretz Yisrael, right? In other words, you can make an Eru around the entire land of Israel, um, and that would be okay. That's really uh, quite surprising, right, that he could, that he could enclose and uh, consider enclosing an entire country. Why do you say that? Yatev Rav Dimi v'ka amal le lehashem ata, amal le abaye le Rav Dimi. Maita amal, so, Abdimi was reciting this, repeating what Rabbi Yochanan said, and Abaye asked Rabdimi, what is the reason for this ruling? How come you can you can make an Eruv and carry throughout the entire country? I mean, you need you need some kind, you need walls, right? You need Surat um, at least something. Oh, maybe it's because um, what you have is on the, on the various sides, uh, then you have the sea coast. You have a place here, today is called Rosh Nikra, in which there is a very steep um, a decline, a cliff. And so a cliff, even if it goes down, can act as a wall. And on the other side, on the Jordan, uh, near the Jordan, um, or the Kinneret here, uh, this is looking from, from Jordan east, there is also a mountain range that slopes very, uh, very uh, steeply. And so therefore, on both sides of Israel, you have a long 
uh, effectively a wall. It's a natural, naturally occurring wall. Uh, so if that's the reason, because you have a, a, what a, a, you have a natural wall on both sides, well done. That is really what you can't say that because Babel Nami Makif La Pedat Mehakisa or Diglat Mehakisa. Then you're gonna have the same thing about say the same thing about the entire Mesopotamia, which is between the Euphrates and Tigris River, and the banks of those rivers are also have steep declines, and so that entire land also would be considered enclosed by walls. And so then you're gonna say the same thing you can carry everywhere. And if you say that. The Kula Alma, Nami Makif, Okeanos, um, then you can say the entire world, right, is surrounded, uh, you know, eventually by, um, here's some more pictures of these, right, the entire world is surrounded by oceans. Um, and uh, not that they uh, knew of all of the continents of the entire world, but right, whatever part they knew about is entirely uh, surrounded by oceans. And therefore, you should be allowed to carry and make an Eru. An entire continent, right? But that would obviously be, be uh, you know, that would just nullify the whole, the whole law altogether. So you would never need anything. Okay, this is actually very interesting because um, nowadays there is uh, there is a, a, a regular eruv in Manhattan uh, made up of strings and all that, surat uh, peta. But before that, some years ago, um, Rabbi Menachem Kasher ruled that uh, all of Manhattan because it's an island and it has steep slopes all around, um, is considered walls all around. And so all of Manhattan is within, is one Eru. Uh, and um, that was, um, you know, that was a, uh, a very respected opinion that many people followed. Um, although today, as I said, there's, uh, there's a, a more, you know, more regular Eru um, in most parts, some parts of Manhattan. Um, okay, good. Um, and so, not Times Square though. Um, okay, so anyway, uh, so what's the reason why you said that all of Israel can, can make, make an Eru? Why is it because of these cliffs? That's not good enough because you can say that about the whole world. So Dilma Ma'alot Maradot Kamat. Ah, maybe you're talking about not only cliffs, but that Israel has a lot of ascents and descents where that's very difficult to travel um, there, uh, right? Along mountain ranges. And since um, people cannot pass through easily, so you don't call it Rishut Rabim. It's not called a thoroughfare because uh, it's so hilly. Uh, so um, maybe that's the reason. Um, Beautiful statement. So he and answers him. All that was uh, um, Abaye was uh, conjecturing. Abay heard the halacha, so he, he figured out what might be the reason. And so Avdimi said, Avdimi was an in-between generation. Avdimi heard it from the Biyot Hanan, and he now passed it on to Abaye. Abaye never, never was there himself. But Avdimi says, you are a man of great skull, right? You have a great mind. I saw your head between the pillars of the study hall when the Biyot Hanan taught this halacha. In other words, I know you weren't there uh, physically, but you must have you must have been there uh, in some way because it's as if you were there in the lecture because that's exactly what Abir Hanan explained when he said that halacha. That's uh, just a beautiful statement in general. Also, it tells us something important that, see, when the Dimi here quotes his teacher, Abir Hanan, he only quotes the bottom line halacha, right? In this case, this is allowed, but it doesn't explain any of the reasoning, right? In other words, when they memorized the teachings of the Hanan gave a whole long lecture about this, right? Probably spent an hour or two. Um, but when the Dimi summarizes it, it's only the bottom line. And then you have to go and reconstruct the reasoning. But obviously, the Hanan gave the reasoning. Um, and you know that because right, right here, the Dimi says, yes, that's exactly the reason that he said. Okay, even though that wasn't the of officially memorized and passed out. Um, okay, good. So now we have the answer. And now we can prove it. So it'll be also in name of Yochanan. So the hills in, in Israel are, are not considered a Shut Rabim, right? If they're owned by different people, you're still gonna have to make an Eru. But it's a Yolatim, it's not a Shut Rabim. Why? Because they are not smooth like the banners of the tribes of Israel. When 
uh, the 12 tribes were walking in the desert, the uh, way the path was made uh, smooth for them and uh, without hills. And so that's called the Shut Rabim, where a lot of very people can go smoothly like a highway. But if something is, place is very hilly and difficult for people to pass through, then it gives it a, um, a um, it removes the, the, the designation of the Shut Rabim. Okay. This is important because it means that there, that uh, the ability for traffic to pass through does affect the definition of an area. Okay, now we have a question. Ba'ami, we're going to have a series of questions that the Chava is going to ask. The Chava is going to ask Rava. Here's the first one. Tell, they're all on this topic. Tell amit laket asara mitoch arba. But abim bok einbo chayavin alav deshut rabim or el chayavin alav. Okay, so it, it, it um, follows immediately uh, from this discussion here about hills. So you know, how are we going to define this exactly? Let's say you have a hill that is that rises ten tefachim, um, where over a hypotenuse of four amot. Right. So uh, we could we could calculate what exactly that angle would be, um, but it's a um, it's a considerable, not a crazy, but it's a considerable slope. And so it's uh, difficult. It's, you're walking uphill, um, and but people do walk it, right? There, there are people that are walking there regularly. Is that considered the uh, shoot beam and you would be chayav, or because it's uh, because people walk there, or since it's a, it is a hill, it is a slope, and chayav in That's his question. Okay, so now we're going to analyze the question. Okay, this cannot, this question, it can't be as asking this question for the banan. Because the banan in our Mishnah, remember, said, when you have corner brackets and people are passing through, then it's still considered a good, uh, the good partitions. So if in that case where it's easy to pass through, and Rabbanan say we don't we don't consider the traffic to be important, right? And it's still considered um, it's, 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 it's not a shoot at a beam. So here where it's difficult to because you have to pass go up uphill and it's uh, it's more difficult to pass through, right? So all the more so it's going to remain the shoot hayachid and the traffic is not going to nullify it, right? Because Rabbanan do not think that traffic nullifies it. And so certainly in this case, it would not, wouldn't, we already know that from the Mishnah and um, even more lenient case. So we're not asking this question for the banan. Rather, it makes more sense, it only makes sense to ask it for the biyodah. Maybe um, the biyodah says, in the case of the corner brackets, where it's easy to pass through and people are passing through, that the people passing through, because it's easy to walk, that's going to nullify the walls and turn it into a public thoroughfare, the Shut Rabim. However, here, haha, who dela nicha nicha tashmishte, lo atu rabim batele mechista. But here, because it's a hill, a, a steep hill, and so uh, it's, it's difficult for people to walk through, there's more reason to say that, um, uh, there's more reason to say that they would nullify it. So over here in this case, do we say, lo atu rabim batele mechista, that the people do not nullify it uh, through walking there, or is it the same as the other case and the, and the traffic does nullify it? So uh, for the view that makes sense to ask the question, and uh, Rava's answer is Chayabin, right? Those people are Chayab, even though it's a slope, and the slope would tend to make it into a barrier uh, or not a thoroughfare, but because people are traveling there, you go by the usage, not by the geography. And so the usage, people are using it as a thoroughfare, and it is a shoot and someone who carries there is chayav meteoraita. Okay, now he continues to ask, afilu olin lo behayavel? What if the people are so steep that they need a rope to climb up, right? Let's say Mount Everest, you know, there's a lot of people that go up a certain path on Mount Everest. Would you call that a thoroughfare, even though it's it's, it's that steep? Yes, if, that's, if there's a lot of people going in that path, then that's considered a path, and that would be considered the Shut Rabim, carry their Chayav. Right? Even this ascent, this was a very steep ascent in this place, Bet Meron, 
He said, yes. So it goes by the usage, totally, not by the geography. That is Dava's uh, opinion. That's his. So even if there was like a lechi and people were climbing over it, it doesn't count. <laughs> If right, was, right. You can, was, yeah, exactly. Because it, you know, you it's obvious. You can use a legal fiction, you know, as long as it kind of kind of makes sense. But if people are trampling yeah. right over it, then it's obvious that this whole thing is nullified and no yeah. no longer is possible to consider it as if it is um, it is a partition. Wow. So the structure in itself is in a way. Unless it's unless its purpose is used, then it's not like meaningful at all. Right, and what we saw about, and, and according to the uh, according to the Yohanan, is that even if you have a wall, a walled yeah. city, but people are passing through it because there's a gate, even that would nullify it, right? So, um, okay, good. So that's uh, that's that. This is so that that's where we are so far, right? Even even a, a Mount, even Mount Everest would be right. considered shoot to beam. Um, if, if a lot of people walk, uh, go, go down that certain path, up that certain path. All right, so now we have a, a, a series of questions that a Chabad is going to object to what Rabad just said. So first question is from a Tosefta, Itibe. Chasel sherabim nechnesin la bazo v'yosin bazo. Rishut harabim letumah, or rishut hayachid la Shabbat. Now we have a courtyard. A courtyard has walls around it, but people walk through, are walking through. They take a shortcut, and they walk through um, uh, this way, and they go out the other the other side of the courtyard. That is considered a shuta rabim for a law of tumah. Separate law altogether. The, the the requirements for a shuta rabim regarding tumah is completely different. It's a case of doubt when he's not sure if a person uh, uh, is be, became ritually pure or not. If it's a shuta rabim, then we consider the person okay. If a person if it happens in a shuta hayachid, then not. So for this purpose, because people are walking there, it's Rishut uh, Tarabim. But regarding Shabbat, it's called the Tayachid. So what do you see here? That regarding Shabbat, even though people are, are passing through, but it has walls around it. It's a courtyard. So it's still considered Rishut Tayachid. So you go by the, uh, by the walls and you don't, do not go by the usage. We don't care that people are walking through. This is a challenge to the Avah's opinion, who just said that it only goes by the usage. Now, whose opinion is this? Mane, ilema rabbanan. So the rabbanan are the one that said, the ones that said in the Mishnah that traffic doesn't doesn't nullify walls. If so, ashtau mahatam benicha tash mishdei amir rabbanan la atur rabim amadat batelei mechista happy rabbanan because they wouldn't need to say this if in the case of the Mishnah where it's easy to pass through, right? It's just little corner brackets. You barely you could barely notice them. You walk right through, and over there they said traffic doesn't matter. Right, and the partition stands, even though it really looks like a wall, uh, like a street, and this and the traffic passes easily. They still said it's not a street. Here, where it's a courtyard, and generally a courtyard has a small opening, and it's out of the way, and so it's more reason to say that uh, there's more reason, more reason to say that the traffic doesn't matter. All the more so, of course, the rabbis with the rabbanan would not consider the traffic significant. So this cannot be the opinion of, of Rabbanan, because there was no, there'd be no reason to teach this if you had the Mishnah already. We're assuming that the Mishnah came first and the Tosefta could not have been taught, or otherwise it would be redundant. El um, the rather, this must be the Biuda. And now that's why it's a question for Rava, because Rava was giving an interpretation of the Biuda. Rava's interpretation of the Biuda was very strict that any traffic at all, in any case, no matter what, does nullify it, and in this case, if you it does not nullify it. So we say, No, it is in fact the banan. And I know you said this is obvious because I know the Mishnah, but it wasn't actually teaching us, coming to teach us the law of the Shuta Echid Shabbat, but rather it was coming to teach us the fact that it's considered the Shuta Rabim for Tum'ah. Because for Tum'ah things, the, the, um, the, uh, the partitions don't matter, it's only the usage. And that's why he came to teach us this. But in fact, in fact it is the opinion of Tapanan. And this, I think, makes sense that this is, is, is uh, historically the opinion of Rabbanan. Okay, so he resolved that first question uh, challenge. And now a second one. Ta'ashema. Me'vo'ot ha'mifulashin ve'barot v'ashichin ba'me'arot reshut ha'yachid ha'shabbat u'reshut ha'rabim le'tum'ah. So these alleyways, 
um, that open an alleyway that opens up to a cistern. So we have a picture of this, a kind of something like this. I have an, I have a, uh, uh, an at, so here's here cor courtyard here and courtyard on the side, and the courtyard opens up to Mavoy, an alleyway. So the alleyway opens up to the Shuta Abim on one side, but on the other side is a cistern. Now the cistern is big enough that this would be considered like a, a partition in itself, right? If something is deep enough and steep, then it's a partition. So this is kind of like a, as if it has three walls, right? Um, even though it's, it goes through, but the, this uh, cistern could be considered as if it's three walls, um, although there is a little bit of space to uh, go past here. That's the case we're talking about. Okay, we say, um, so I have, has these things at the end. This is considered the Shutayachi, the Shabbat. So it's okay, it's considered like three walls for Shabbat, and so you could carry there, assuming you, you, know, you close it, you, know, you do something on the other side. But regarding Tum'ah, it's called, it's considered a public thoroughfare for that, cases of doubt. Okay, so what's, what is this case, right? Is it saying that and what Babarot, are you talking about a Mavoy that's inside a cistern? What, what, what is this? Rather to clarify, Ela Laborot. The, the Mavoy is open, not inside a board, but rather to a board. It opens up to a board, which is the picture we just we just said, we showed. Now, whose opinion is this that uh, would consider this a the Shutayachid um, for Shabbat? If in the case of our Mishnah, where it's only corner brackets and the traffic easily flows through, and in that case, Rabbanan said, we don't care about the traffic, it remains a Shutayachid, then in this case, where you have to squeeze around the board and it's not easy, the traffic does not flow easily, obviously he would say, that the traffic does not nullify its status in Urban Jushut Echid. So I wouldn't need to teach this at all for the Banan. Ela lav Rabbi Yudahi. So rather, this is a case of, this is the opinion of Rabbi Yudah, and it's a challenge to Rabbah, because Rabbah's interpretation of Rabbi Yudah was very strict. And he said, as long as people walk through, it doesn't matter how steep it is, how difficult it is, any traffic at all undoes its status as the Shut Rabim. But in this case, it doesn't. So how are you going to deal with this, Rabbah? Oh, he has the same answer. This is in fact the opinion of Rabbanan, and that's why the, the public does not nullify regarding Shabbat. You ask, isn't that obvious? Yes, the law of Shabbat is obvious, but the law of impurity was not obvious, and so it comes to teach us this for, um, for that reason. Okay. What does it mean that the, with, with regards to impurity, that's still considered uh, um, when, you have, when you have a case of doubt, uh, uh, whether a person is impure or not, if they are in public, then it's okay. When they're in private, then it's not okay. So it's so for a person who's considered impure, then then the it's considered rashut uh, rashut rabim. Yes, yes, because that only goes by the traffic, like how many people are there. It doesn't that have anything to do with the walls? Okay. Okay. Last challenge. Tashema. So um, this uh, path of Bet uh, Gilgul, which is a uh, you know, very steep path, difficult to traverse, um, and, uh, and others like it are the Shut Echid for Shabbat and not for Tumah. Uh, what is, how steep is this? This is an interesting definition of, for how steep it is, that a slave who's carrying a, uh, a whole uh, um, a measure full of wheat um, can, uh, cannot run up it, right? It's too steep to be able to carry a bundle and run away from an officer. So that was to run pretty fast. Okay, if it's that steep, then it's not really a considered passable, an easily passable area. Um, and so for uh, regarding Shabbat, it's called Yishut HaYachid. It nullifies, right, the, 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 the uh, steepness of it nullifies its status as a thoroughfare. 
מנה, אילא מדבנן השתא מה הטעם דיני חדש משתא, אמרי רבנן לא עתו רבי אם בת אליה למחיסה, אחא דלני חדש משתא לכל שכן, אית מנה משנה רגורים דה. corner brackets, which is easier to pass through. And he said he doesn't consider traffic to be important. In this case, where it's very difficult, so steep, um, all the more so he would not say that traffic would uh, nullify its status. And a lot of Yehuda, rather, must be the opinion of the Yehuda. And, uh, and although it's very steep and, and uh, although it's very steep and, and difficult to pass through, it's still considered a shoot hayachid. And so Rava, Rava, you just said, according to the Yehuda, that um, if you pass, if people pass through, no matter what, and it does nullify it, so this contradicts what he said. Oh, so he says a different answer. Finally, um, this is talking about a case in Eretz Israel, and Yoshua loved Israel so much. And that when Yeshua came and, and conquered the land, he made a whole network of highways so that people can travel the land of Israel, the, can travel the land of Israel. And so any place um, that was easy to pass through, right, nice open uh, places, flat, he, he designated that as public area. Um, and so that was a highway where everybody can go. Whereas any spot that was difficult to traverse, and he designated as the Shut HaYachid. And so that's why these roads in Eretz Yisrael, uh, which are not easy to use, have a special status of the Shut HaYachid. And everybody would agree to that. However, in other places that are not in Eretz Yisrael, that's where Rava said his law, that um, if it's diff if it's, uh, even if it's difficult to traverse, if people do but pass through there, then its usage is what counts, and that turns the status from the Shut HaYachid into a Shut HaRabim. And uh, so Rava was able to uh, 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 counter all of the challenges. Um, and so uh, we see here this very important discussion about uh, what, how do you define the Shut HaYachid and the Shut HaRabim, and the two factors that come into play are uh, this, this geography and physical barriers, partitions, but also the usage of it. And so these two factors combine together in different formulas according to each of these different opinions. Amen.